Okay, we're going to cover how to uh, put 3D text into Modo, although this works for any 3D program. Um, as many of you know, Modo has a tool to create text from outline fonts within it. Uh, in my opinion, it's not very good. Um, there's a much better tool available to most people, and that's called Photoshop. Uh, Photoshop these days even has a 3D mode in it. Um, nobody can ever complain about the font handling in Photoshop because it's very, very, very good. Uh, so if I want to get 3D text out of Photoshop, first I create a document. Um, this is fine. It doesn't really matter because we're not going to use the document. We're only using it to lay out the text in the first place. Uh, then I go to my text tool and I put in my text. Uh, we'll put in a bunch of stuff like that and some stuff like this. We'll put some caps in there too so you can see how that all goes together. Um, if I select this text, I can use their normal tools for picking the font. Can I get away with that font, I wonder? I'm going to try to get away with that font. We'll see if it does what we need it to do. Uh, if I like what I see there, uh, and you know what else, Al? make everything centered like that and I'll escape. Let me see if it'll let us do this. Uh, I figured it wouldn't like that font. Um, this particular font has some issues. I think every other font and actually I'll show you. Uh, we should try something sort of complex so you can see how well it handles this. I like those fonts. Though this is going to have the same problem, I think I need the outline issue. I could find one that has those outlines. There's lots and lots of fonts in here, obviously. Uh, I'm going to step out of there, and then we will step around like this. Uh, I have to reselect. This is sort of okay, although italics I'm not loving. Um, that is quite ornate. I'm going to use that font. Escape. I go under their 3D menu. I pick new 3D extrusion from selected layer. Watch what happens. A lot of stuff turns on, dials and things. And boom, we got a 3D view in Photoshop. Uh, this is a top view so we can see how deep our text is and then we have all sorts of tools to actually modify the text in 3D right within Photoshop. Um, first off we have camera tools. These are really just to see what we're doing. I'll bring that in so we can see more of it there and if you look under the properties panel you have a whole 3D layer here and the first thing you can do is change how deep they are. We'll try that let's say. Yeah, I sort of like that. Uh, if I go to the next button over, I get controls on what I'm going to do with that extrusion. Um, I'll show you as an example. Um, taper. Let's me stretch them out like that. I, I sort of like that, so I'm going to, I'm going to do that. Um, I'll show you these other ones just so you can see what happens. This literally twists it, and you'll see that the 3D model follows suit. Uh, you know what, we'll give it a few percent of twist like that, just to show we can do it. Um, let me pop over here. This is the bevel on the front of them. Right now they have no bevel. Ah. Uh, I'm going to add a bevel. And I'm going to zoom in a bit um, so you can see the letters. So if you look at this K and this G, for example, See that? Ah. Uh, I turned onto the light by mistake. I'll go back here to this layer and we'll play around with those bevels again. Bevel, bevel, bevel. Uh, okay, so I can say from no bevel to everything being fully beveled, and then I can decide what angle I want that bevel to work at. Ah. Let me go back over here and I'll click this mess. Okay, back to here. 
back to here. Uh, let's go back to our bevel. Good. Bevel here. Um, angle, uh, strength. Uh, do I want it on the front and back? I'm going to put it on the front and back. Okay, so now I have these very fancy letters here. Go under 3D, uh, export 3D layer, and they have OBJ. OBJ is a very standard format that goes into everything. It goes into Maya, it goes into Softimage, it goes into 3D Studio Max. Uh, I'm going to put in the C drive to make it easy to find. I'll pick OBJ. I will call this uh, test text. hit save. Original format, exporting 3D. Good. Now we'll use Moto since we have it here. This was a scene we were playing with earlier with some textures and things going on in it. I'm going to turn off my Ray GL and I'll hit the A key. File, import. C disk, uh, there's test text. Right there. I'll hit open. I want to hit OK. I don't want to change either of these. These will control, these will limit what I can do in um, Moto. And let's see what happened here. There's my text. If you look, the geometry is very well made. There's no tearing, nothing weird going on. Um, and it gave me, um, not there actually, it built different um, texture groupings on it already. Uh, if I go under render, just to see here, and I frame myself up here. You know what, I'm gonna turn on this 3D view here so we can find our text more precisely and then rotate around on it. Good. That's good. Um, if you'll see if I'm in that object, which I am, uh, and I start putting textures on it, I'll go to my preset browser. Um, I'll pick a couple obvious textures. Uh, we'll go to metals, why not? That's good. Uh, I'm going to pick this steampunk plated for the body. Yeah. And you'll see that did just the body, it did not do the fronts, because those are a separate object, a separate texture group. I'll make the fronts of these gold. And there we go. We've successfully made high quality 3D text and brought it into Moto. With, we can manipulate it with all the things we know about Moto, uh, which can be quite useful. Um, again, I could take it into any other program too. I can load this object into Maya, I can load this object into Lightwave, Softimage, you name it. Um, using the 3D stuff within Photoshop is a very good way to take advantage of the best of what they got there. We'll finish letting that render just to see what it looks like. I think that's pretty cool.